You want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth, the show that is honest, reveals the facts, truth, and statistics, and does not mess around. Follow me, Taylor Phillips, on Twitter at DT2Phillips. Email me at TaylorGatorPhillips14 at Yahoo.com. Follow Ed Smith on Twitter at EdSmith313. And go to our website at MichiganSportsTruth.com. Also like our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth, and join our Facebook group with the same name. The Michigan Sports Truth podcast on Spreaker is also available on iHeartRadio and SoundCloud. Also a subsidiary of Sports Radio Detroit, thus available on iTunes and Podbean. This podcast is particularly not for entertainment purposes, and the views expressed by the host of this podcast are opinion-based. However, they do not come without facts, research, statistics, and truth, whether other people like it or not, and no matter how harsh or complicated it may be. This is the Michigan Sports Truth, and nothing can ever stop it from being correct. And welcome to episode 275 of Spreaker Sunday, the Week in Review edition of the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast on Spreaker. I'm Taylor Phillips, along with Frank Vasner, sitting sitting in for Ed Smith, still out due to private personal reasons. I don't even know what's taking him so long, but um, I'm not I'm not going to bash him for any of that. It, it's just private personal reasons, like I just mentioned before. Follow Frank Vasner on Twitter at Frank underscore Vasner V A J C N E R. He's also the host of. The co-host with Derek Lawson on the show after further review on WXUT 88.3 FM in Toledo. Frank, uh, just another uh, busy week in, for the Tigers tanking process, so uh, let's get to that. That one is long yeah. gone. They get swept by the Royals, 5-3, to 3-1, three, three to one and 16-2. to two. The Royal that that sixteen to two route was was a masterpiece, or should I say, a disaster piece for the Tigers? A masterpiece for our tanking process. Bruce Rondon gives up a grand slam to Eric Hosmer, and then he plunks Mustakas, gets ejected. Mike Mustakas tries to go after him. He's held. Bruce Rondon's held back by Michael Fulmer. Chris Castellani, I, Chris Castellani, the host of the baseball. Casanova podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Castellani2014. Castellani uh, usually does his uh, video rants on Twitter, video post game rants on Twitter, but it's not his Periscope. But um, his his uh, video rants were post game rants were. Um, were amazing as I saw it. The first time I viewed a, a video post game rant by Chris Castellani himself was that was after the sixteen two debacle, and it was about Mike Mustakas charging the mound, and Mustakas had every right to uh, go after Bruce Rondon, and Bruce Rondon was a pussy, was being a pussy, and um, he was also being a poor relief pitcher. He's just a deplorable human being by all means necessary. And and then they lose to the Astros 6-5. to five. Brad, Princess Juliet, Brad Asmus, Brad Asmus, the Tigers manager, uses Bruce Rondon to start the eighth inning to replace Jordan Zimmerman, who gave up only, one, only three runs, gave up three runs through seven innings pitch, and brought, Bruce Rondon doesn't even get an out. Gives up a three-run home run to Josh Redeker with runners on first and second. And that's due to be the game winner. And that, and after the after that game, Brad Osmus was saying he was trying to give Bruce Rondon a chance at redemption. Ah, shut up, you idiot! What? There's no there's no chance at redemption. That was just 100 percent stupidity. Nothing but. It's clear that he just doesn't get it. I mean, of all the, 
of all the excuses we have heard Brad Lawson to skew out of his mouth saying, oh, well, he's got to have redemption, or he's my guy, or so-and-so can't pitch four outs, or, one, or another one, uh, I was saving insert relief pitcher here for extra innings. You make you make excuses. It's a clear sign that you're a loser, and you should not be managing a major league ball club. No, no, that that's cor- that's correct. You losers always make excuses. Winners put everything aside and back everything up. That's 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 a vast difference between. Losers and winners. Losers quit, whine, make excuses, bitch and moan, all sorts of stuff. Winners just get everything done without... Winners always shut their mouths and get everything done. They don't complain. They don't even brag about anything. They just get it done. Or they don't brag about much, but they got it done. Even if they brag, they, they would they would still be right anyway. But... But after that, the the Brad Ausmus stopped using Bruce Rondon. Went went to Shane Green at, after uh, Matt Boyd pitched seven and a third innings, and Shane Green and Justin Wilson did their jobs. Tigers went five to three, and then just today, Sunday, thirteen to one over the Astros. Tigers take two out of three. For God's sake, oh, man. is this a joke? Justin Upton. Hits a grand slam to highlight a five-run seventh inning, and Justin Verlander, six scoreless innings. I, uh, that's just just Justin Verlander right there. So forget forget that. That uh, well, that actually pitching and defense get gets it done, especially pitching. Justin Verlander gets it done. Tigers offense, wow, thirteen runs against the American League leading Houston Astros. That that, that is insanity to me. I'll be honest with you. I mean, this has been something I've seen before. Team gets swept by a dump fellow dumpster fire, and then they go out and they look like world beaters against some top level team. It's just, I mean, look, Taylor, it is just as maddening to you as it is to me. But again, you mentioned the team just needs to go in the tank. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently, there's. There is a lot of miscommunication and in that front office, especially since uh, maybe we'll get to that later with proposed trades and all that, sh- all that shit. But the, I mean, the, this team just—it's just become a complete shit show. I mean, I really don't know what more I can say. More like a complete clown show. They get they they get swept by the Kansas City Royals that that aren't really. Uh... Uh, they're like an average team, actually. Not, and, and then and then they take two or three from the team that's leading the American League right now. The the favorites to win at least the American League, maybe uh, the, not quite the favorites to win the World Series. The Dodgers lead the entire MLB MLB league with the best record in the majors right now. The way I look at the way the standings stand out in, before everybody's very eyes as they see it as they look at it on MLB.com and everything else. But uh, the Tigers and the Astros, uh, just a just a bizarre turn, just a bizarre turn of events to end that series. But uh, the Tigers going into the Bron- are going into the Bronx for three against the Yankees. The Yankees lead the Red Sox by just a half game in the AL East. The AL East is no joke. And the Tigers are going on the road for seven. Three against the Yankees, and then four against the fourth place Baltimore Orioles, who are fifty and fifty-four. Tigers stand at forty-seven and fifty-six. Ten games back in the AL Comedy Central to the Cleveland Indians. The Indians finally lose one of the to the bottom feeding Chicago White Sox. The Indians take, still take two out of three. They should have swept them. Tigers should have been swept by the Astros, of course. That's this is just. But instead, the Indians take take only two of three, and the Tigers take two of three from the Astros. That's 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 like almost half bizarre world there, but enough bizarre bizarre enough to uh, drive me over the edge. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and if you want more bizarre, it sounds like that there's a report on Twitter that Justin Wilson could be headed to the Chicago Cubs, mm. and the play, and the player that they could be getting in return is uh, oh, man. J- Yamir or Jamir. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Candelari, Candelario, and it's and I see a tweet from one uh, Robert Murray that. Capillaria was not in the Cubs AAA lineup. Murray is a baseball writer and reporter at FanRag Sports, so just take that for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. We also we also uh, found out, according to John Heyman on Twitter, there were five team. There were uh, earlier at eight ten just just tonight. Offers have been upgraded on Justin Wilson to the point where he will definitely he will definitely be dealt by the deadline. Five teams still in. And then Mark Feinsand, uh, before, uh, 14 minutes before that, at 7.56 p.m., my lucky number, by the way, sources indicate Tigers left-hander, left-hander Justin Wilson likely to be dealt tonight. Astros considered the favorite, but others making a play for him, too. But but your update just, just, uh, just recently... Justin Wilson likely headed to the Chicago Cubs, the world champion Cubs. Last I checked, the the Cubs after last night, after Saturday night, they led the blue, they read they led the Milwaukee Brewers by a half game. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm interested to see what kind of return Justin Wilson would fetch because a uh, hard throwing lefty that you can use in late innings, even as a closer, those guys aren't a dime a dozen. And I really don't know where Candelario is ranked according to Keith Law. So hopefully they get, he gets somebody he a hell of a lot better than what you got from Arizona well, when he had dealt J.D. Martinez. Yeah, and again, Arizona had the worst farm system in 2017 heading into spring training. And let me, I'm trying to find the Chicago Cubs here. The Chicago Cubs ranked 28th, I believe. Oscar De La Cruz, the right-handed pitcher. It was, it, it, Keith Law wrote, it was De La Cruz last year and it still is. If he's healthy, he has number two starter upside already possessing the stuff and control to get there the top sleeper prospects in 2017 for every team. But uh, that's, that's all the info I, I've got. I've gotten from, from him. And from some other trade, trade related news from uh, Evan Woodbury of M live. It's a, uh, he shared a tweet from Ken Rosenthal that says the Rockies are apparently after going to get Jonathan Lucroy from the Rangers which likely means that Alex Avila is not going to be going to Colorado, so I guess he may be he may end up going to the Cubs. So I mean, I'm trying to disconnect the dots here, but it could be Wilson and Avila both head to Chicago. Mm-hmm. So Justin Wilson and Alex Avila likely headed to the World Champion Cubs. So I I think we're uh, at least. We at least cracked part of the case. We'll have to. See, yeah, I mean, not, we'll have to see what happens yeah. again. To anyone who's listening, this is this. Nothing is really confirmed yet. I mean, we're just reading stuff on Twitter that's kind of saying what could happen, and we're just trying to look at possibilities here. So, if we have something that is confirmed, then hopefully we can break it to you. Yep. We got to keep our eyes on on this twenty four seven three sixty five. That's that's part of our job here at the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast. We we heard earlier that Jose Iglesias may be traded by the the uh, deadline itself, according to ESPN's Buster Olney. But uh, Justin Verlander now now known he's staying put, barring a miracle to move him anywhere. But I'll, I'll tell you why, though. The Tigers pay him too much money, 
28 million per year and and then 22 million in 2020. That that was on both Mike Yelich and then J, GM and then GM Dave Dombrowski before Chris Yelich and Al Avila took over. Though the two guys that are that are working in the front office right now are stuck with them are, are stuck with Justin Verlander, but you got to blame Mike Yelich and you had to blame Mike Yelich and Dave Dombrowski for for that. Just just business wise, not personally. I know Mike Yelich died. I pass my personal condolences to him and his fam to his family. But uh, business, we're just talking business here. So that's it. Yeah, and I think the whole thing with the the Verlander trade. I mean, the the, un, the unwillingness to to, see, to move to move him. I know you mentioned that they're paying him a lot of money now, but again, you have the opportunity to retain some of that salary. You don't got to retain all of it, obviously, but just like retain about thirty cents on the dollar. But the thing is, if you don't, if you don't, if you can't move him. Um, or even find a way that just really is another mark on you saying, hey, we got somebody whose best years have been wasted, whose years are just wasted away, and he's been one of the top pitchers in the game, and now he's not really going to have anything to show for it. No. <laughs> because personally, I think it's, it's just, because if they don't move, if they don't move him at the deadline, which they're obviously not. His value is just going to keep going down and down and down and down and down and down and down. And so eventually, they're not going to be able to get anything for him. Nope. They're not. Just this is, that, that's, that's confirmed Justin Ver- Verlander is staying along with Michael Fulmer, which we don't know why. Michael Phil, actually, we do know why. Michael Fulmer wants to stay in Detroit regardless of the past rumors. So, there you go. So, Al Avila is still waiting until that trade deadline itself. Uh, he's trying, but uh, here, here, here's what I may indicate. He's uh, trying to. He's been talking with other teams. I get it, but that's just part of trying to survey the trade market as best he can, or probably, or probably at, at least some ability. That that's all. That's all. That's all of how I can estimate it right now. Again, we'll have to see what happens there later tonight, or maybe tomorrow, Monday at Monday at four by four p.m. Right before the Tigers head into the Bronx to take on those Yankees, those damn Yankees, that is. Ian Kinsler was was being mentioned in in media in, in terms of trade rumors as well. Could he could he be traded by the deadline? I I'm not so. It's really hard to say if Kinsler gets moved because, for one, unless there's a team that's looking to get an upgrade at second base or has got injuries, that's about the only scenario I can see him getting moved. Otherwise, I think he ends up staying put. But one one thing I, I did I did want to bring up, and this this is something that kind of pissed me off. I think it was a report in. The New York Post. I forget who wrote it, but I do know that our good friend Jeff Moss of the Detroit Sports Rag, you can follow on Twitter at Jeff Moss DSR, said in his Periscope that the Tigers were looking to to attach guys like Michael Fulmer to as part of deals for some guys who had hefty contracts just for the purpose of dumping salary and that only. Now, I've been, and look, you and I have been saying the team needs to sell and do all that shit, but 
if you're just giving a dumb salary for the purpose of dumping salary and not get anything in return for the value, then you're just you're basically just committing suicide. You're driving the value of your team down, and that means Chris Illich probably ends up getting much less in return for a, from a potential buyer. Uh, that's correct. That's the whole thing right there. And just this just in on the trade deadline front, uh, per per uh, John, per uh, Ken Rosenthal, uh, the Rockies have acquired Jonathan Lucroy from the Rangers. Clubs have not yet confirmed. So, yep. And the Cubs are working hard to acquire Tigers pitcher Justin Wilson, like you mentioned before. I yeah. just get, I just got that notification a, a few minutes ago. On my phone from the Score mobile app, the Score.com mobile app. So, Score.com is one of our, one of my own personal sources, mobile app sources. For, that here on the Michigan Sports Truth. So is BleacherReport.com, along with Jeff Moss, uh, the the founder and editor-in-chief of the Detroit, the Detroit Sports Rag, and Justin Spiro of Spiro Avenue. So that that's going to um, pretty much do it for uh, baseball talk. That's, that's all we have to uh, get off our chest unless you got anything else. Uh, so far, nothing else. And I'm just still monitoring Twitter in case anything happens to break. All right. Well, looks like we're going to have to uh, move on for right now and touch on the Lions. Just a couple injury updates. Touchdown, Detroit Lions! The Lions have placed defensive end Ezekiel Ansa Z on the physically... Physically unable to perform list. Don't remember what kind of injury he has, but there's that. And they placed tight end Eric Ebron. Oh, oh, they haven't made a decision yet, but tight end Eric Ebron has, has just recently suffered a possible hamstring injury during practice. And that's, uh, and uh, people may refer to to Eric Ebron as E drop, but because they they see him as a pass dropper. But the way I the way I've been watching him on TV, he's been making more ca- he had been making more catches than catching more passes than dropping them. But um, that just because he, he's a North Carolinian. Carolinan doesn't mean he uh, he's from North the North Carolina Tar Heels doesn't mean he's that bad. I mean he I mean in 2014 he outplayed Brandon Pettigrew. That that's just my past here, but he's been continuing to make catch, catches and uh, that's that's another minor loss for the Lions. Two minor losses for the Lions, Ziggy Ansah and Eric Ebron. Yeah, and I th- I don't think they're going to be that big. I think because Ebron only had a hamstring injury. I mean, I don't, I mean, has it mentioned how bad it is? If it's if it's a tear, then you should be concerned. If he just pulled it or strained it, all, all that he can do is just uh, rest easy for a few days and just let it heal on its own. Mm-hmm. So that's it on that. In that's it in that department. So one subject left. This is this is really short and sweet. We go to the Red Wings here. There was an article from Winging It in Motown, headlining. The Red Wings missed the boat on Jonathan Erickson buyout on the on the Jonathan Erickson buyout. So what's next? 
This is published by ZDAD88, Z-E-E-DAD88. He has, Erickson has three years remaining on his contract with a four point, with a four and a quarter million AAV. That's average annual value. The flaws are definitely there with Erickson's game aside from the fact that he's never been a consistent offensive contributor. Uh, uh, he, like, I, like I pointed out several times before, he can't block shots and he turns the puck over. Those are his two flaws. And he also doesn't contribute much offense either because for, like as, much, for as much money as he's making, he should be he should be chipping in thir- at least 30 points from the blue line the season. And he's never cracked 15 points. Man, is that man is that awful? My God, yeah. he's terrible on this. Just because he's injured doesn't mean he he's great. He's 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 been terrible. He can't he can't um, he, he can't play unless he he can't play when he's not a hundred percent. Can't play much. Yeah. But that article also mentioned what do they do if, since they missed the opportunity to buy him out and essentially yeah, they there's been, some space because they're over the cap right now. And yeah, they mentioned the Pavel Datsuk, uh, the, the, his, him being traded to the Arizona Coyotes last calendar year in the 2016 NHL draft. Mike Green being talked about in trade rumors. Yeah, I think I think Green is somebody who gets moved at the deadline, though. Because they mentioned possibly him getting moved to a place like Chicago or even Pittsburgh. I mean, even Edmonton, too. Who a place that's looking for blue line help. But also, they mentioned, and there's the possibility that Nick Cromwell ends up going on long term IR this year. Like we mentioned, so, like we mentioned and plenty of say, times. And they'll say, oh, well, he's got to have an actual injury. Well, people got to realize he has chronic knee problems. That qualifies as an injury. And there you for those go. who don't know, Joffrey Lupel supposedly showed up with a clean bill of health to Toronto Maple Leafs training camp. What happened to him last season? Whoops. He was on LTIR. And he ended up going back home to, he ended up going back to his vacation home in California. Not to be confused with his former team, the Anaheim Mighty, the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah. Formerly known as the Mighty Ducks, but the Anaheim Ducks, yeah. There, there were several other names being mentioned outside of the wings. Marion Hosa, a former Red Wing. Chris Letang, Ron Hainsey. Well, the the well, the, the well, Pittsburgh was much as a potential trade partner if you would deal somebody like Mike Green, because given that Latang has had a rash of injuries and if he can't stay healthy, need somebody to add to their blue line, and of course the Blackhawks so might be looking for blue line help as well, and of course they might need somebody who can provide a veteran presence, especially with Marion Hosa out for the year. With, uh, with some medical condition. Uh, I, I tell you what, this... Um, uh, I'm, yeah, hockey's a rough sport, but that, we're not going to use that as an excuse. We're, we're just going to... This is just how we, how we tell things here. And then they mentioned Riley Sheehan. Goal is for 81 games before scoring two. On the final game of the Joe, in a in a meaningless game against the Devils, Wendings ended up winning that one five to one. By the way, I recall it very well. Then they rec- then they mentioned Tyler Bertuzzi and Ben Street playing in Grand Rapids. Bury a, and then they go to burying a player in the Myers or on LTIR. Johan Franz and Nick Cronwall, Joffrey Lupul, as you mentioned before, and that that's. You talked about it already. That that's all it has in this article here. So that that that's pretty much it. That's all. That's all the material we have to cover in just 30, 30 and change minutes. So 
Yeah. Just gonna just gonna do one event on our segment called What's Your Grade? Pencils down everyone. It's time to find out what's your grade. And our event is Tigers General Manager Al Avila waiting until the trade deadline or near the trade deadline. Frank, what's your grade? Well, waiting until the trade deadline. Look, this is a tough. One. This is a tough one because everyone will remember how I bitched and moaned about him moving JD Martinez too quick, and he should have waited. And personally, I think he is making much better of a decision by waiting until the deadline. Let the market set at itself. Don't be the guy who sets the market because you're going to end up looking like an idiot in some way, shape, or form. But the fact that nobody else has been moved, it's kind of hard for me to actually give a grade for him at this point because, well like, I, well, like I said, I think it's the right move, but in order for me to, have to really grade him, he's got to make a move, and then I'd have to do this again next week, so for him waiting in until the deadline not to do anything more, I'll commend him for that. I'll give him an A, but that grade is subject to change. Mine's subject to change too, but uh, in ca- just in case of an emergency, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a B plus because um, y- 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 you never know if Al Avila's upcoming trades, if any, are gonna be that great or, or not as great. They might not be as great. And we apologize for the down, technical everyone. difficulties. It's I time forgot to, to turn up the audio on, on the soundbite board here. Again, you you get you give him an A, I give him a B plus. So But it's change. Yep, subject to change. Yep, both of ours are subject to change. So that's our what's your grade segment. That, that was short and sweet as well. So for our audience, if they have a grade for that event, post that in the comment bank below this episode. Please don't go out of line. That is episode 275 of Spreaker Sunday. Before we sign off, we want to remind everyone to share this episode and our entire podcast on social media and have their friends share that as well because we want to tell them that the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast organization is boosting its posts on Facebook on its Facebook page and, sh- and searching for local advertising sponsors. If anyone has a business that's interested in sponsoring this program, you can follow Sports Radio Detroit on Twitter at Sports Radio Debt at Sports Radio DET and send them a direct message or email them at Sports Radio Detroit in the contact section or email its co owners, Roger Castillo and Carlos Peligro at rogcast 81 at gmail.com. Also like their Facebook page and join their Facebook group. And finally, find their podcast available on iTunes and Podbean. Frank, thanks very much for your help. Didn't have to do much, actually. It's just, it was just a slow week. Yeah, but I think next, I think it's safe to say that next week we could have a little bit more activity and hopefully it's going to be something good we can talk about. Hopefully, yeah, at least hopefully. So, I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me on Twitter at DT at DT2 Phillips and Frank Vashner at Frank underscore Vashner V A J C N E R. And like like and share and follow the Michigan Sports Truth Facebook page and join its Facebook group. We'll talk to you again next week on episode 275. Thanks very much for listening, downloading, and sharing TTFN. Ta ta for now. Don't let it